Okay, it looks like we haven't got a lot of light here, but we're going to be working on what your, we call the Hoshizaki Ice Machine. Isn't that pretty? Look at all those fancy parts in there. Float, float switch, pump, coil, compressor, nice electronic board. Isn't that pretty? Ice bin. All of this stuff got to work in perfect sequence with each other according to this manual we have over here that is like how many pages let's just have a look here yeah 50 or 60 pages and there are what they call sequence of operations here this here is all about which LED lights are on at which time for making each thing operate for a certain amount of time and over here we have little charts that show us sequence of operation on how long each thing runs in a little chart form which carries on page after page for now we've started it up and it's run the first 60 second cycle switching over to hot gas and hot gas defrost at this point it wants to clean all of the ice off that might be residue on the coil which there isn't today but so it shouldn't stay running there for very long it's a minimum by the other chart of two minutes to 20 minutes so we'll just wait a minute see if it shuts off it's running its harvest cycle which is step two let's go up top and just have a look at what's going on up here when we look down inside we see that water is running the coil is warm, it's trying to melt the ice off. Now the machine has gone to step three, well I guess they call this one, two, three, four, step four, which is a uh, freeze cycle. So the should be only light number one on, and it's going to run five to sixty sec minutes to make ice. Let's have a look here. When we look inside of here, we see the LEDs. Uh, you can hardly find them. There's only one green LED on right down in there. And according to my little chart over here, bottom one is number one. So number one is on. And that's what it says here. Number one should be on for five to 60 seconds. Well, 60 minutes. Well, let's wait it out, see how much ice we make. Now, apparently one of the more really important things during the freeze cycle is that we have a water level in this float here. It's got a float inside that container and it will lift it up and down. It should be lifted up now with water level. And then when it slows down, it or, or lowers down it will engage a little switch which is that wire coming out the top there so I'm trying to see what the water level might be when I move, move this flashlight around can't see it in my video but I can see a line right about where I made that black line now that's important that that isn't up too high and overflowing it would mean that the water valve is open and it keeps just overflowing water and the level never changes so the thing never knows when it's made enough ice. It knows how it made enough ice by knowing that it used a bunch of water which stuck to the coil and then the water level comes down. Now I've also decided to take a walk up on top of the machine again, climb up here and look down inside to see the water flowing. I'm trying to just see if it looks like the water level is not just constantly overflowing. If the water goes too high, then what happens is the there's an overflow tube where the water just runs out. So it'll just continue to flow continuous on and on and on and on. And you know what? I'm suspicious that is what is happening to this machine. Because it's not even making any ice yet. It's just continually flowing water. Now I can check that by go checking the drain and see if there's water constantly flowing out. Let's do that. So I've climbed in behind the machine now and there's the drain tubes coming out. 
one coming from up top in the machine and one coming from the bin to when the ice melts it just runs out now I'm hoping I can pull this black tube out of here no it's attached somewhere so I'll be able to do that but what I need to know is if there's water coming out of this blue one if it is continually flowing now, I might be able to see it here I'm going around the other side Okay, on the other side, I can see two tubes coming out, joining together now. <laughs> so that's two more outlets. This small one might be just a drain from the case. The big one's probably a drain from the machine. And it's not clear, so I'm not going to be able to see. I'm going to just check the drawings, like the parts drawing on the whole machine and see what, it, what those really are. Okay, the drawing shows drain valves water tank right here drain valve here off of the pump so it means the pump constantly pours water out into the drain if this thing's open so we're going to have to try and locate that on the machine or have a look and see if there is actually water coming out let's have a look we go over to the pump here and i see the two water lines I don't see where the drain valve is. Water coming out here and up here, going up to make ice. A separate one going up here. I'm gonna have to investigate this a little more and see where that valve is. So I checked out the drains, followed that downstairs into the basement. And there's no water overflowing continuously, so that's not the problem. The water level's probably okay. So after about 10 or 15 minutes of this thing running here, I can see that down inside the water is running and everything and there's a water level, but that water level is not changing. That means it's not making any ice. I also felt up inside the coils, no ice being formed. I'm going to put the gauges on this thing and just see if see if it's low on gas because that's probably what's going on it might have a leak now I've checked the water temperature I can stick my fingers in there or down in here and I can feel that the, the water is nice and cold I put a thermometer in there and it's about seven degrees but that's not enough it's got to come down to zero close to it to freeze ice so we probably are short of gas. Now I've hooked up the gauges. It's quite a thing because one of them's way up in there. I'm trying to hook it in. But I also hooked up the tank of gas because I didn't want to purge any air in. I purged my gauges out with gas just in case it was in a vacuum. But actually, pressures are not too bad. It's not a vacuum. And I might have to phone the techs and see what the pressures are supposed to be on this. Or refer to the manual again. So according to the chart here, we have head pressure 279 or so and suction of 46 to 48. So uh, we're definitely low. Because we got 43, but we don't have a head pressure at all. So. We need to boost that up to get the thing to run cold. Let's try that. And then we'll have to probably have to find a leak. Now, as a test, I'm running that pressure up. I'm adding gas a little bit at a time. Try and raise that pressure and see if we start getting any freezing on the ice plates or not. We've got that up, that head pressure up, and that's what's really important. Let's check that book again on that. Head pressure as much as 260, even 320 with a warm room, so we got ourselves 240. And uh, let's check the condenser. Once the thing starts actually working, it should be warm. Oh yeah, now we got some warm air coming out the back of this thing. So it means it's sucking heat out of the water, pumping it out, so I bet you it'll start making ice now. We'll raise that a little more too. So it's been running a few minutes with this higher pressures here and I notice that my suction lines are getting really cold coming off the coil and uh, a 
I've, I've moved and put my thermometer down in there and that looks like it reads about 1.8 1 degrees now so if the water's nice and cold should be making ice. Let's go up and see. Up top here. Look down in there again and see if there's any ice. Well, we can't see it. I can feel ice forming on those plates now. I'll let it go a bit here but Definitely got a leak somewhere. We'll have to check it over. Let's check the temperature of that water again. Here we got a thermometer in there. Pull it out. Have a look at it. Yeah, 1.9 is what it was going up now. So just above freezing, which is perfect. Obviously, if it was below freezing, the uh, tank would just go solid. So it's always just a, a degree or two above freezing. Now after running for about 10 minutes, we see that this, these lines are frosting up pretty good. That's a good sign, we're getting the cold coil nice and cold. Water level doesn't look like it's really changed any. I can't see that in this light, but I can see that the float is still sitting at the same place. So we will uh, wait on that a little more. Okay, now we have a lot of racket going on. So that machine now is dropping ice like crazy. So we fixed it, it's freezing up good. Stand back under the noise. We're gonna have to do some leak checking on this after this ice all drops. And then I'll see if I can repair the leak or not. But that ice is dropping out of there pretty good. Slowing down now some. That locks down in the bin there. We'll just wait and see if it finishes its frost, goes back to freeze okay, then we'll shut it off and check the leaks. Okay, it looks like it's finished dropping ice. It's switched back to freeze run now. Get some light in this picture. It's running, it's back on freeze. So we're gonna shut it off here and then get our leak detector. Okay, I got the hand leak detector out. Beeping away, that's normal. When it starts beeping really fast, that means we've got a leak. Let's just do a quick thing here and see if we're getting anything. Oh, I'm getting some beeping up in there. I'm going to shut off and see if I can... Well, the good news is I think I found a leak here on this solenoid valve. Maybe it's pretty steady beeping. And there's oil stains all down there, which is a good sign of a leak. And you know what? There's even a drip of oil on the bottom of this pipe. Look at that. We're definitely leaking up in that valve. That's not going to be a cheap cheap part, I bet you. But what we'll do is we'll overcharge it a little bit and keep it running for a while while we order that part. Now I've had it running again for the second turnaround here for 10 minutes. Keep an eye on the pressures here, up to 300, it's a bit high, but I wanted to overcharge it a little to keep it running for a few days anyway with that leak. So we've been timing over here the cycles, and I've got a perfect number one and two, which is pre-purged defrost. Now it's on a freeze cycle, it should be 20 to 30 minutes, we'll see what happens. Okay, now we have a lot of racket going on because that machine now is dropping ice like crazy. So we fixed it, it's freezing up good. Stand back under the noise. But that ice is dropping out of there pretty good. Slowing down now some. That locks down in the bin there. Just wait and see if it finishes its frost, goes back to freeze okay, then we'll shut it 